this video is going to give a quick run through on distance versus time graphs, velocity versus time graphs, and acceleration versus time graphs. Now the way I normally put these the way I normally write these down is I put them in a very specific order. All right. In the x axis it is always time. All right? That's our independent variable. Our dependent variable is going to be distance, velocity, and the acceleration. So let's start with a simple one here. If we start with velocity, let's say it is a line like this, right? Just a straight line up at an angle. That would be something like y is equal to uh, 2x. Now, if our, this is saying that our velocity is increasing over time. So if our velocity is increasing over time, that means we must have some kind of acceleration, <clears throat> some kind of an acceleration, right? So we have an acceleration. And that's supposed to be a straight line. Okay. Um, and I know this is a straight line because this is rising con as a constant, right? It's rising constantly. It's not going up and down like this. It's very straight, very steady. So what's going on with our distance? Well. As we're moving along during in time here, we're covering a little bit more over a short period of time, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more distance, until we start going so fast that we're covering a lot of distance in a very short period of time. Okay, so this distance graph is actually curved. It's curved up. Now, if we wanted to understand this a little bit deeper, what we have here is as we go down, we're actually, we're actually going to graph the slope of the previous slope. Because the slope of this line is 2 over 1. So down here, our slope is 2. We plot 2 for every second here. Does that make sense? So down here, y is equal to 2. Now as we go up, y is actually equal to x squared. If we draw the other side of this, which is what you would not see, it's actually like a big U shape. All right? Now, the only way that I can actually <clears throat> know what these equations are as we go up, this up here, uh, as we move up, <clears throat> is actually an integral. You actually be doing calculus to come up here. It's the integral of f of x. As we go down, this is the derivative. Derivative of y with respect to x. These are both calculus. Um, to actually get these equations. So I'm not going to expect you to be able to get these equations. But what I do expect you to be able to do is look at this line and say that if my velocity is increasing over time at a steady rate, then I must have an acceleration that is constant. And if my velocity is increasing at a steady rate, then my distance is curving up faster and faster and faster, so I'll have a curved line just like this one. Now, if you keep working through these, like I said, this one you can work your way down by finding a slope, and you can work your way up from uh, any of these working upward by finding the area, right? So if you're moving down, you're going to find the slope of this line if you're going to move to graph this. If you're going to move up, you're going to find the area under this curve to plot this one, okay? But you won't even have to do that much work. You should be able to just look at this line and uh, move your way up and down. Now, I'm going to give you another quick hint here, and that is that it, if you start with a line like this, something like 2x, I know that as I go up, my distance would curve. 
And if I went, if I started here with my velocity as a curve, as I go up, that would be a curve. As I go down, if this is my velocity, I know I have a constant acceleration. If this is my velocity, my acceleration would be zero because my velocity is not changing. If this is my velocity, then I'm standing still. This is my distance. I'm not moving here. I'm staying at the same distance from my origin. Then my acceleration is zero. So this is the, um, this right here is the pattern that you'll find as you go through these different charts. And we'll get into some more difficult ones later.